Galileo di Vincenzo Bonaudi de Galilei, February 15, 1564 to January 8, 1642, was an Italian astronomer, physicist, and engineer, sometimes described as a polymath from Pisa. Galileo has been called the father of observational astronomy, the father of modern physics, the father of the scientific method, and the father of modern science. Galileo studied speed and velocity, gravity and free fall, the principle of relativity inertia, projectile motion, and also worked in applied science and technology describing the properties of pendulums and hydrostatic balances. He invented the thermoscope and various military compasses, and used the telescope for scientific observations of celestial objects. His contributions to observational astronomy include telescopic confirmation of the phases of Venus, observation of the four largest satellites of Jupiter, observation of Saturn's rings, and an analysis of sunspots. Galileo's championing of Copernican heliocentrism, Earth rotating daily and revolving around the Sun, was met with opposition from within the Catholic Church and from some astronomers. The matter was investigated by the Roman Inquisition in 1615, which concluded that heliocentrism was foolish, absurd, and heretical since it contradicted Holy Scripture. Galileo later defended his views, in Dialogue Concerning the Two Chief World Systems, 1632, which appeared to attack Pope Urban VIII and thus alienated both the Pope and the Jesuits, who had both supported Galileo up until this point. He was tried by the Inquisition, found vehemently suspect of heresy, and forced to recant. He spent the rest of his life under house arrest. During this time he wrote two new sciences, 1638, primarily concerning kinematics and the strength of the materials, summarizing work he had done around 40 years earlier. Early Life and Family Galileo was born in Pisa, then part of the Duchy of Florence, Italy on February 15, 1564 the first of six children of Vincenzo Galilei, a lutenist, composer, and music theorist and Giulia Amanati, who had married in 1562, Galileo became an accomplished lutenist himself and would have learned early, from his father a skepticism for established authority. Three of Galileo's five siblings survived infancy. The youngest, Michelangelo or Michel Agnolo, also became a lutenist and composer who contributed to Galileo's financial burdens for the rest of his life. Michelangelo was unable to contribute his fair share of their father's promised dowries to their brothers-in-law, who would later attempt to seek legal remedies for payments due. Michelangelo would also occasionally have to borrow funds from Galileo to support his musical endeavors and excursions. These financial burdens may have contributed to Galileo's early desire to develop inventions that would bring him additional income. When Galileo Galilei was eight, his family moved to Florence, but he was left under the care of Muzio Tadaldi for two years. When Galileo was ten, he left Pisa to join his family in Florence and there he was under the tutelage of Jacopo Bergini. He was educated, particularly in logic, from 1575 to 1578 in the Vallombrosa Abbey, about 30 kilometers southeast of Florence. Name Galileo tended to refer to himself only by his given name, at the time, surnames were optional in Italy, and his given name had the same origin as his sometimes family name Galilei, both his given and family name ultimately derived from an ancestor, Galileo Bonaudian important physician, professor, and politician in Florence in the 15th century. Galileo Bonaudi was buried in the same church, the Basilica of Santa Croce in Florence, where about 200 years later, Galileo Galilei was also buried. When he did refer to himself with more than one name, it was sometimes as Galileo Galilei Linkio, a reference to his being a member of the Accademia dei Linke, an elite pro-science organization in Italy, it was common for mid-16th century Tuscan families to name the eldest son, after the parent's surname, hence Galileo Galilei was not necessarily named after his ancestor Galileo Bonaudi. The Italian male given name Galileo, and thence the surname Galilei, derives from the Latin Galileus, meaning of Galilee, a biblically significant region in northern Israel, because of that region, the adjective Galileos which means Galilean, has been used in antiquity, particularly by Emperor Julian, to refer to Christ and his followers, the biblical roots of Galileo's name and surname were to become the subject of a famous pun in 1614, during the Galileo Affair. One of Galileo's opponents, the Dominican priest Tommaso Caccini delivered against Galileo a controversial and influential sermon. In it he made a point of quoting Acts 111, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Children Despite being a genuinely pious Roman Catholic, Galileo fathered three children out of wedlock with Marina Gamba. They had two daughters, Virginia, born 1600, and Livia, born 1601, and a son Vincenzo, born 1606, due to their illegitimate birth. 
Galileo considered the girls unmarriageable, if not posing problems of prohibitively expensive support or dowries, which would have been similar to Galileo's previous extensive financial problems with two of his sisters. Their only worthy alternative was the religious life. Both girls were accepted by the convent of San Mateo in Arstri, and remained there for the rest of their lives. Virginia took the name Maria Celeste upon entering the convent. She died on April 2, 1634 and is buried with Galileo at the Basilica of Santa Croce Florence. Livia took the name Sister Arcangela, and was ill for most of her life. Vincenzo was later legitimized as the legal heir of Galileo and married Cestilia Bacchineri. Career as a Scientist Although Galileo seriously considered the priesthood as a young man, at his father's urging he instead enrolled in 1580, at the University of Pisa for a medical degree, he was influenced by the lectures of Girolamo Barro and Francesco Bunamassai of Florence, in 1581. When he was studying medicine, he noticed a swinging chandelier, which air currents shifted about to swing in larger and smaller arcs. To him it seemed by comparison with his heartbeat that the chandelier took the same amount of time to swing back and forth, no matter how far it was swinging. When he returned home, he set up two pendulums of equal length and swung one with a large sweep, and the other with a small sweep and found that they kept time together. It was not until the work of Christian Huygens, almost 100 years later, that the totochrone nature of a swinging pendulum was used to create an accurate timepiece. Up to this point Galileo had deliberately been kept away from mathematics, since a physician earned a higher income than a mathematician. However, after accidentally attending a lecture on geometry, he talked his reluctant father into letting him study mathematics and natural philosophy instead of medicine. He created a thermoscope, a forerunner of the thermometer, and in 1586, published a small book on the design of a hydrostatic balance he had invented, which first brought him to the attention of the scholarly world. Galileo also studied disegno, a term encompassing fine art, and in 1588, obtained the position of instructor in the Accademia dell'Arte del Disegno in Florence, teaching perspective and chiaroscuro. Being inspired by the artistic tradition of the city and the works of the Renaissance artists, Galileo acquired an aesthetic mentality. While a young teacher at the Accademia, he began a lifelong friendship with the Florentine painter Sigli. In 1589, he was appointed to the chair of mathematics in Pisa, in 1591. His father died, and he was entrusted with the care of his younger brother Michelagnolo, in 1592. He moved to the University of Padua where he taught geometry, mechanics, and astronomy until 1610. During this period Galileo made significant discoveries in both pure fundamental science as well as practical applied science. His multiple interests included the study of astrology, which at the time was a discipline tied to the studies of mathematics and astronomy. Kepler's supernova Tycho Brahe and others had observed the supernova of 1572. Ottavio Brenzoni's letter of January 15, 1605 to Galileo brought the 1572 supernova and the less bright nova of 1601 to Galileo's notice. Galileo observed and discussed Kepler's supernova in 1604. Since these new stars displayed no detectable diurnal parallax, Galileo concluded that they were distant stars and, therefore, disproved the Aristotelian belief in the immutability of the heavens. Refracting Telescope Based only on uncertain descriptions of the first practical telescope, which Hans Lippershey tried to patent in the Netherlands in 1608 Galileo in the following year, made a telescope with about 3x magnification, he later made improved versions with up to about 30x magnification. With a Galilean telescope, the observer could see magnified, upright images on the Earth, it was what is commonly known as a terrestrial telescope or a spyglass. He could also use it to observe the sky, for a time he was one of those who could construct telescopes good enough for that purpose. On August 25, 1609, he demonstrated one of his early telescopes, with a magnification of about 8 or 9, to Venetian lawmakers. His telescopes were also a profitable sideline for Galileo, who sold them to merchants who found them useful both at sea and as items of trade. He published his initial telescopic astronomical observations in March 1610, in a brief treatise entitled Sidereus Nuncius. Moon On November 30, 1609, Galileo aimed his telescope at the moon, while not being the first person to observe the moon through a telescope. Galileo was the first to deduce the cause of the uneven waning, as light occlusion from lunar mountains and craters, in his study, also made topographical charts. Estimating the heights of the mountains of the moon was not what was long thought to have been a translucent and perfect sphere, as Aristotle claimed and hardly the first planet, an eternal pearl to magnificently ascend into the heavenly empyrean, as put forth by Dante, 
Galileo is sometimes credited with the discovery of the lunar libration in latitude in 1632. Although Thomas Harriot or William Gilbert might have done it before a friend of Galileo's, the painter Sigilli, included a realistic depiction of the moon in one of his paintings, though probably used his own telescope to make the observation.